Have you ever seen one of those videos where someone shows a monkey a magic trick and it blows its fucking wee mind? That's probably what I looked like on a few occasions while I was watching Squid Game. It was never my intention for this channel to be about reviews of current shows, trying to get people interested so they don't miss the boat. But on the rare occasion that a film or show makes me actually say the words, that's the most amazing thing I've ever seen. That deserves some attention. Squid Game is a South Korean Netflix show about a bizarre organisation of masked men that offer destitute, debt-ridden Korean people a chance to win millions and millions of won by competing in games where the punishment for losing is death. And if that concept and these visuals have already got you interested, I highly, highly suggest you stop watching this video now and just go and give it a try. You will not be disappointed. But if you're watching this and you're thinking, what is this shit and why should I care? Or if you're just doing that thing where you watch a video essay about something that you already love, just to have it fed back to you all over again. Then let's get into it. Hundreds of people joined the Squid Game in an attempt to win up to 45.6 billion won by competing in six different games, each of which is a kind of murderous bastardization of a well-known childhood game. Among these hundreds, our crew of good guys starts to form. There's gi -hoon, a recently unemployed man who's been gambling to make ends meet, but enters the game to win enough money to pay off the loan sharks hunting him down and to pay for his diabetic mother's medical care, as well as keep his daughter from moving to America with her new stepdad. Sangwoo has been pushed to the brink of suicide by the ramifications of his recent business failures and the mounting litigations in the aftermath. Ali wants to raise enough money to move back to Pakistan and build a better life for his wife and kid. Sebyok's a North Korean refugee who's been throwing good money after bad for too long, hiring dodgy investigators to hunt down her mother who's somewhere between the North and China. And there's Ilnam, an old guy in fairly bad shape who deserves to be somewhere he's being taken care of, but whose life in the outside world has become so difficult that the Squid Game is his only option to make things better. If you've seen Bong Joon-ho's film Parasite, or the show Itaewon Class, or Yang Ik Joon's Breathless, all of that same South Korean brand of working class desperation and social struggle against higher forces where money means everything is interwoven all throughout Squid Game. None of our heroes are here because they want wealth and fortune. Not one of them spews dreams about having a big house and a fast car. The money isn't really the prize. The money is just a tool to take back a life gone wrong and a future that's been snatched out from under them. There are so many little details that bring the characters to life. Seconds after meeting some of them, you'll wish they were a thousand miles away from this place. Some of them, you'll come to think they belong here and hope to see them fall. But Squid Game does more than just introduce a whole load of smashing characters. It balances those characters and the details of their struggles within the astounding scale of its production. Some of the sets are breathtaking. Not only do they look amazing, they contrast so well with the average grey and brown South Korean streets we see in the early parts of the show. The Squid Game itself jumps off the screen as just so surreal and deadly. It's reminiscent of the British series Utopia, which also had a mishmash of bright day glow colours and people getting horrifically murdered. And just as Utopia had a third party doing his own investigation between the good guys and the villainous hidden figures, a Seoul City detective named Junho follows gi to the game and manages to sneak in disguised as a guard. Through his eyes, we get to see the inner workings of the Squid Game staff, not just as a fly on the wall, but through the intensity of Junho's perspective as he does his best to blend in with the incredibly strict routine. And it's here that I think Squid Game really skips over a typical pitfall. 9 times out of 10, I hate police characters. I feel like they only exist as a neat way to wrap up a story, to write characters out of a show or a film, or to put all the interesting characters behind bars where we can't see them anymore. And they tend to do all this with an incredibly dull adherence to the law instead of having their own interests and moral compasses. But Junho's got his own agenda. 
He's not there to take down the Squid Game because it's wrong. He's there to find his brother, who he thinks was a former player in the game, and he's literally ready to kill to achieve that goal. Like the players, Junho's experience as a part of the games grinds him down until all that's left are two clashing voices of desperation. One begging him to get out, and the other drawing him deeper. A lot of the time, in both films and TV, it's common or even expected for good characterization to get lost in the shuffle of a gigantic, expensive, visually stunning piece of work. But in Squid Game, the characters come first, and that's what really makes the difference. Not just the people at the heart of the Squid Game, but the evolving landscape of the games that has them going from friends to enemies. When the first game begins, the players aren't aware that they'll die if they lose. It's only when the first game is over, and dozens of bodies have piled up, that they begin to understand that failure means a bullet in the head and nobody finding out what really happened to them. At this point, the players are actually allowed to vote if they want to continue with the Squid Game with this new knowledge, or to go home. And they democratically decide not to continue. However, after returning to their lives, scores of players choose to re-enter the games after being reminded of their impotence in the face of incredibly limited options due to their position in society. That means that every last player in the Squid Game from there on in has not only chosen to be here, but has done so knowing that continuing could mean their death. This exit and return whittles down the players to only the most desperate of individuals and plants the seed that each and every one of them knows that each and every one of them knows that death is just one wrong foot away. And that prize money starts at zero and increases by 100 million won with each of the 456 players that dies in the games. It's here where the tensions begin to rise. And tension really is the thing that Squid Game excels at above all else. I know I'm not the first person to point this out, but Squid Game is more than a little reminiscent of the anime stroke manga Kaiji. Kaiji has a similar setup where millions and billions are on the line, and slipping up could mean losing your life. It's got identical intensity, where you're desperate to see the characters you love succeed, but know they've got to suffer, sometimes for a good long while, before they get where you and they want them to be. And one further similarity between Kaiji and Squid Game is that neither treat its audience as if they're idiots. A perfect example of this in Squid Game is with the tug of war game. Two teams of 10 players take opposite sides of the rope, and the team that falls off the gap in the middle plummets off a 100 foot drop. So when one of the teams that steps up onto the platform consists almost entirely of gi -hoon and all his friends, we immediately know that they're obviously not all going to die halfway through the show. But Squid Game knows better than to pretend that they are in order to make nervous an audience that's already two steps ahead of them. So instead of the focus being on whether or not our characters are going to win, the focus shifts instead to how our characters win. That's made the interesting part. Just before the tug of war game begins, Ilnum, who was crucially thought to be useless in a strength competition due to the fact that he's about 80, explains to everyone his old tug of war team's strategy for victory. Usain. But like all good movie plans, something has to go wrong. It's only quick out of the box thinking from Sangwu that saves the team's lives. Yeah. 
It's fascinating to watch the thought process that leads to the team's victory. Exhilarating to watch it play out. Still, somehow, a relief to watch our characters walk away with their lives, even though we already knew that they would. And it's just so good. So good. It's so good to see respect for the audience not get shipped out in a dinghy when the budget gets too high. For these reasons and more, Squid Game is obviously and subtly a thing of beauty and it deserves all the international attention it's getting and more. The show applies creative management of tension in an environment where we already feel like we have the answers to great effect, but when it wants to, Squid Game is entirely capable of some good old fashioned shitting of pants. After one of the early games, a nerve wracking chain of events kicks off. We already know that the guards are totally ready to let the players die or kill them themselves. And we know that with the death of each player in the games, 100 million won is added to the prize pool. Exhausted and hungry after one of the games, the players are given dinner by the guards. There's exactly enough food for all the members, but a spanner is thrown in the works when a group of malicious players cut back into the line for seconds, causing five other players to go without dinner. One of these players wonders how this can be. A woman from the cut queue speaks up. The player making the fuss storms over and demands what is rightfully his. It doesn't end well, with Doksu, the strongest and most insidious of all the players, beating the man to death in full sight of all the players and all the guards to no protest from any of them. Gihun finally speaks out, decrying the killing, shouting that the players can't stoop to this level where they just kill each other. But, horrifyingly, the only official response is the tumbling of a few more wads of cash being added to the prize total alongside a hideously ironic slot machine victory jingle. Everybody knows what this means. Wordlessly, the situation escalates. It's not just people who die in the games that cause the prize total to be increased. It's any player who dies at any time, even in the staging area. And lights out is in 30 minutes. Whispers erupt. Gihun and his friends try to organise a plan for if fighting breaks out, where they'll meet and what they'll do. Nobody knows who'll strike first or when. Nobody knows if it'll happen at all. But as Squid Game has continually reminded us, death is on the cards. <laughs> There's so much more to say about Squid Game that I'm not saying here, so consider this a recommendation, not a complete review. It's been a while since I've wanted to just gush about a show like this to everyone I know. Squid Game is one of those rare shows where the attention it's getting is in direct correlation to how good it is. It's honestly been a pleasure for me to watch not only the astronomical rise of Squid Game, but to see it be just part of the recent surge in Western attention towards South Korean TV and films. As it was in the wake of The Office and Game of Thrones and the colossal impact they had on television, we're now living in a post-Squid Game world. And personally, I'm fucking fine with that. <laughs>